All right. So today we're going to talk about uh, mixed voice. We're going to talk about enunciating through that. I know I've had a lot of students lately that are asking me specifically to cover this. So that's why I'm here. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about these things, if you're having trouble with these things, or just mixed voice in general and you need more information, then come join me and we'll have a chat about it. All right, so uh, let me start out by saying that if you do enjoy the content I'm making and you enjoy uh, learning about these things and you want to learn more, I make exclusive content for Patreon, and uh, the people that support me over there are helping me to uh, you know, stay alive and make music and make uh, you know, the things that I care about in life, so definitely appreciate that. If you want to learn how to make music, mix, record, I give uh, all kinds of things about that, all kinds of tips and make videos about that exclusively as well. Uh, also, I just made a calendar on my website, sterlingrjackson.com. If you'd like to book a lesson with me, you can do so right through that. You don't need to reach out via email and ask me about it and all that. It will display your time zone, and uh, you can see times when I'm available and all that, and you can pay right through the site. All those great things. So let's talk about this stuff. Now, starting out of the gate, one thing you have to understand that should be relatively easy to, uh, to comprehend, but you need to keep putting into practice so that you can understand what it feels like on a physical level, is that singing in and of itself is the elongation or the elongating of vowels. Um, it might sound stupid, but the more you understand that and get to understand that on a physical level, the body, it is my opinion, will help self-correct as you move forward. As you build a foundation, you learn how to breathe, you learn how to diaphragmatically support, you learn how to place your, your vowels, and you learn how to sing, actually sing, your body will continue to correct you when you veer off the path because it'll become more and more unnatural. Mixed voice is something that definitely feels rather unnatural, but when you're trying to sing through it and you know enunciate through it and all those kinds of things, at least build enough of a foundation so you can kind of retract and go back to that place and be like, okay, I'm building from here, you know, how do I get to here? Instead of just being like, I wanna learn how to sing high, and you have no idea how to do anything else. So, And we have plenty of people coming to me for that, and uh, I know it's a very common thing, and I probably did a little bit of that too, but then again, I was somebody that was never trained. So, <clears throat> okay, um, when I say that, if I say a sentence like, hey, how are you doing? If I were to sing that or make that singy, once again, logically, it would be, hey, how are you doing? And that wonderful thing I just sang is now sung or singy because I elongated those vowels. Now, I suppose you could try to uh, elongate consonants and stuff too. How are you doing? S's and it's, that's not going to work. So, like I said, keep that in mind. Now, uh, knowing that, as you practice specific scales, as you practice specific sounds, a lot of times one of the most beneficial things, even if you're working on screaming, is to go through your vowels. Simple as this. A -E -I -O -U. Recognize that in your chest voice, it's a lot easier to enunciate your vowels. In your head voice, it's going to change maybe pretty drastically because your throat is elongating itself, it's shaping itself in a different way, and we can't enunciate the same way. Notice that that had more of a consistent one kind of quality to it. It's placed in one kind of way where it can't move as much and it has to maintain more of a shape. Does that make sense? So you can go through that simple enough with yourself, but the higher you go in your range, the more you're going to have to shed vowels and the more you're going to be left with a lesser palate, so to speak. That really becomes comes into play now when we're getting into mixed voice, especially for people that are just getting into mixed voice. And the important thing here to take away from this video, if you are just getting into mixed voice, is that you're probably going to start off with how many vowels? One vowel. <laughs> so what does that mean? It means as you find mixed voice, you're going to start with one vowel. You're not going to have a whole bunch of vowels. You're not going to be able to move around and have a bunch of different sounds. You're going to have one sound. <laughs> I had that. A lot of people are going to have that. You might have two sounds, and one might be easier than the other. And when it comes to staying in that one sound, hopefully this is making some sense. I'm not losing you. When it comes to staying in that one sound, <clears throat> I was stuck in that one sound for like probably months, 
three, four, five months. I remember doing these scales along with this program I had downloaded. And they would do different things like medium mix and light mix and stuff. I couldn't do any of that. I could make one sound. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Another reason why I kind of, I like to always kind of say, be gentle on yourself, allow yourself time to grow. It's the same thing as going to a gym. Uh, the muscles need to acclimate. You need to acclimate to the coordination. Just like, you know, if you're trying to learn how to do a handstand in a day, and then you're going to get super pissed off at yourself and get upset because you can't do it. Like, dude, it's going to take some time. You got to, you got to learn this whole kind of balancing act. And that's what the mixed voice thing is. So let's move into this. If you're finding mixed voice, or you found a little bit of mixed voice, hopefully you already know what I'm talking about. I like to go about it by teaching the cry technique or a lot of different things. Sometimes it's about lower larynx, sometimes it's about this or this or this. But in this case, let's just talk about the cry technique. If you remember that, or you've seen a video on that, or you've seen other people's videos on that, you know that we're trying to find this cry -y type of sound. And keep in mind too, Everybody keeps coming to me with, you know, am I in mixed voice? And I, I try to find this and I feel like I'm in a different sound. And I feel like it's what you're saying. <clears throat> Most important fundamental thing about mixed voice is starting in chest. Always start in chest. When in doubt, start in speaking voice too. Meaning start right where I am. Ah, ah, not some weird thing that you're tying all together or distortional or vocal fry. Just for right now, start in chest voice. Then apply your cry, mix, whatever you're finding, and can you glide up and can you glide back down to the almost the top of your head voice range and back down. So meaning you should not be starting in some like, that's my mix. It's not. Um, you need to start in chest and remind yourself, there we have mix. Make sense? So keep that in mind. Now, if you just heard me make that sound, I'm going to show you, like I said, the way I learned this again. So this is going to go right over my bridge. When I learned this, I was making a sound like this. No support, no anything happening other than making that sound. And once I got better at making that sound, I started getting a little bit better at manipulating that sound. But once again, that was my vow. Ah! So when you go up this way, some people know that I talk about holding a ball shape in the mouth, which is very crucial and very important. And it definitely gets into this enunciation, which we're going to talk about. As we try to learn how to enunciate uh, in singing, if you imagine you're holding like a super ball like we used to buy when I was a kid... <laughs> back in my day. Um, it's a ball about this big. We're holding that in the middle of the mouth. A-E-I-O-U. We're holding that there. Enunciation happens lightly right here in the front of the face, right here in the front. We're trying to keep the jaw relaxed as much as we can. A -E -I. And we're trying not to really change that shape much. So if I go from A to E, for example, a -E -A -E. I'm taking that ball immediately and going <laughs> and squishing it, right? So pinning the lips here. A -E -A -E -O -U. We do not have a reason to go horizontal. I know inflection and, and emotion, all those things are going to come to play at some point. But we're trying to learn how to physically do these things so that we can then bring emotion into them. Same as guitar, drums, bass, piano. Emotion and being able to display that is going to come a little bit after we get some we get some muscle memory going of how to physically do these things. Then we can start to go into our mind or into the emotional space and start to emote through these things. But it's harder to emote through them when our body's like, "What are we doing?" Ah, and we don't know what's going on. So uh, <laughs> that was funny. Anyway, uh, now um, holding that ball shape. If you think about it like a round shape. Hey! As we go higher, like I said, we're going to have less vowels. We're going to have less access to vowels. We're going to move into more of a consistency in one sound or kind of an amalgamated version of all those vowels trying to be in one space at one time. I want you to start thinking in terms of mixed voice like you're holding a square block in the mouth as we go up. Hey! Hey! 
This might not help you. The visuals help some people, not so many other people. But um, holding the ball, or you can, like I said, imagine holding a square block. Because they're going to flatten out a little bit up here. And we're going to imagine this up here on the hard palette in the back going a little bit flatter. So, as we move higher, remember, again, we have that one sound that we're getting to. A. I'm still getting over cold. So now, I'm gonna try to put an E through that. What do you think I'm gonna get? I'm gonna get an A. E! Can't do an E. E! There's my E. <laughs> e! Part of this is because we're elongating and we're elongating the vocal track down this way. So everything is pulling itself this way. If you want to also imagine another visual, we're pulling the voice up like this, like a string is pulling straight up. So we're moving straight up like this. That's another reason why E doesn't work. Because E goes this way, E like this, and that doesn't work. So we correct, we vowel modify, and we change it to a vertical. Let's try OO. These are called vowel modifications, by the way. Do you need a list of them? No. This is a physical thing. You can feel it. OO, OO goes kind of the same way, like this. OO. So I would change that vertically. OO. But let's take it and mix it into that cry sound again. That cry. So if I take ooh, ooh, how about a, a, how about e, a? Do you hear much of a difference in those vowels? I hope this is starting to make a little bit of sense. I know I've been scattered and talking about a lot of different things, but you can hear how these are kind of modifying and changing themselves. Let's do it in terms of sirens, because they're easier to understand. And then you can modify with me. Remember, pinning the lips here. Thinking vertically. Everything happens vertically. E -A -A -Yo! Everything goes like that. <clears throat> this isn't a neat thing I came up with. This is a thing across the board that many people will be teaching you about if you're learning opera, classical, R&B, rock music. Doesn't matter what you're doing. Doesn't matter if you want to sound heavy. Doesn't matter if you want to sound light. This is all the same across the board. This is what the physical instrument is wanting you to do. So if we take octaves like this and we slide, <clears throat> take A again, since that's where we kind of were, and we're thinking box, we're thinking, oh, oh super, it doesn't matter. A we can try to go low larynx A and yawn, which might help you. Or we can try just straight up cry A and put the face in there. A Let's see if we can get there. But once again, listen to the sound. Enough of that. E. E modifies to A. Modifies to the same sound. Once again, if you're only starting out with this, go back to the same sound. So transition from your E into ah, which you're going to hear me basically kind of do the same thing. I might be able to use more muscle and get a little bit of a different sound than you, but still we're basically going to the same place. E. So let me try to show you with E again. E. Any of that E. Can't do it. And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating that just to prove a point. E can't do it. E e if uh, I tell students this sometimes, imagine you're going through a Y, like turning a knob. E e with almost all these vowels, that kind of works. Uh, a to O. E a o. A that yeah is pulling me down physically like this. Yeah. So I'm kind of going, yeah. <laughs> so uh, what are we doing? E. E. -A -A. 
One more for this one. I should be nice and vertical already. I is a great vowel. Doesn't matter though, we're still going to the same sound. Is this making sense? If you feel a physical engagement of the jaw, know that most of the time you're going to be dead in the water. It's not going to work. Um, tends to also, if you feel an engagement in the jaw as you're rising through a, uh, a siren or something like that, like this slide, then that's only going to increase. So kind of like holding a milk jug here, then the higher you go, the more you just go like this, and then it just pulls you down. So if you're feeling that engagement, you need to lose that engagement. Uh, I've done plenty of scales like this too, but you can take one really quick here just to keep giving information, and you can do it with an E. But we can put a thumb right here in the bottom of the chin and pull the jaw down like this and try the same thing. I have this problem all the time, live. Um, it depends on how tired my voice is from singing other people's shit, whatever the fuck I'm doing, but um, it does happen. And when it happens, it compounds and compounds each song. Like the muscle goes, okay, 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 and then it's a problem. So uh, let's do one more. Like I said, we'll do uh, the U sound, or U, which turns into U. Now we could go straight from uh, chest to head. And just shed some weight like that but we're trying to mix and we're trying to get a little bit of a mix that's substantial instead of just oh like that oh 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 <laughs> now let's start trying to put some words through this uh, as always i'm doing this off the cuff and just teaching out of my brains i didn't write this down so we're going to take some words i'm going to come up with different words we're going to try to put those through different places in your range um, once again hopefully you've developed a little bit of a mix or something that makes sense so that you can understand this and follow along otherwise you're just going to be listening to me make a lot of strange noises uh once again let me remind you too <clears throat> I just did O, might sound a little bit different, but listen to similarity in spaces again. <laughs> Remember, the higher you go, the more sh you shed it, the more it goes away. The more you cannot really say words through it, the higher you go, the more all of that goes away. Think about Mariah Carey singing in whistle voice. You cannot put any words through it, it's just sounds. Head voice, mixed voice, all that stuff enters into more of that as you go higher. Think about like Jesus Christ pose uh, from Soundgarden. I just stare at a man in Jesus Christ pose. The lower I get, the more you can understand what I'm saying. The higher I go, it's just da, 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 da. it's that same sound over and over again. Make sense? So yeah, I was trying to say it's the same oh, no, 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 right? <clears throat> Let's take right here over a fig, you know, a baritone's typical bridge. Uh, let's do, I always bring this word up. Let's sing the word great. Great! We have a G stop, glottal stop in the first part of it. G that creates this. Great! Great! If you want that T in there, happens a little bit at the very end. But try to find that place. If you have to cry into it, whatever you're doing. Great! If you have to slide up to it. When you listen to that word, can you can you tell I'm saying the word great? Barely. Probably context would help, but for the most part, you hear the vowel. You hear a little bit of that enunciation. That R, gr, you need to get that out of the way as soon as you can so that you can get to the open vowel. Down here, it would be a similar situation. Great, great. 
but that R needs to get out of the way so that you can go back to your vow singing. <laughs> uh, what's another word? Let's sing the word dumb, because what I just did was really dumb. Same thing, let's go up to two notes. Dumb! Dumb! Let's slide on it. Dumb! Dumb! Making sense yet? Dumb! How about, let's do one more word. <clears throat> let's sing the word, let's sing the name Steve. This is getting ridiculous, but Steve, not easy to sing. So if I was down here in, in middle C, Steve, Steve came over to my house. Let's try it up here. Middle, or this is high C. Steve, Steve. That would typically go Steve right here through the jaw. Can't do any of that, so it turns into stave. Steve, Steve. Let's slide on it again. Steve. Steve, my good friend Steve. Hope this made some sense. <sighs> um, <laughs> if you have any questions, do feel free to ask. I'm going to try to take this over to Patreon to give a little bit more information. Not that this hasn't been long enough and uh, ridiculous enough, but hopefully some of this stuff's starting to make sense. I appreciate you joining in. I appreciate you following me. Uh, thank you.